Yep, we're live streaming. We are live streaming to Facebook. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. We are thrilled to be here with you on this Oktoberfest season 2023. Yeah, excited to share some of these beautiful Oktoberfest beers. Uh, we're probably not going to drink all of these tonight simply because, well, there's a lot. Um, there are a lot. And there's a reason for that. You might notice there are maybe a few more than arrived in your kit. Sorry. <laughs> um, and the reason for that is because a few of our members were delivered by one specific carrier who shall remain nameless. And they did some funky weird stuff and just held all their packages for a little while for a reason still kind of unbeknownst so, no. to us. <laughs> um, so they did not get their Trip Scout packages in time, but our lovely beer vendor, Craft Jack, who we love, um, helped us out and very quickly shipped them for different Oktoberfest beers because they were all out of the ones that we already shipped. We picked them. some delicious ones, and I guess the consensus was there, but these look to be a pretty amazing too from what we've come to understand about the replacement ones. Absolutely. So we have them ship us the replacement ones as well so that those of you on the call today who have this set versus those of you who have our Sip Scout set we can drink along with all of you, although yeah. we are not going to open eight beers because that would be a little ridiculous. Um, so let's do this. Yeah, we? let's for, get into it. For those of you who don't know us, I'm Suzanne. I'm the founder of the Crafty Cast, where we are all about celebrating and supporting craft alcohol makers like these amazing seven craft breweries that we have with us here today. Indeed. My name is Evan. I'm a certified sommelier, certified cider professional, um, and I guess... Beautiful opportunity <laughs> uh, beer drinker and enthusiast as well. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. He is your boozy expert for the evening, as am I to some degree, but not nearly the degree he is. Uh, you know uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So if you have any questions at all, make sure to use the chat. The chat is open, so feel free to use the chat. Um, and we will turn this on at the end of, you know, maybe a half hour in, 45 minutes in, depending on how long we talk Ram. about all of our, our <laughs> Oktoberfest beers and tasting techniques. Um, but we'll invite all of you to kind of turn your cameras on, get on here and chit chat with us, all that good stuff, if you would like. Um, all right, so Oktoberfest, let's get us started with our quiz. One of our quiz. Uh oh, failed to launch full. Uh oh. Uh oh. There, there we go. go. <laughs> all right, You're having all sorts of technical difficulties and carrier difficulties and all sorts of weird stuff this month. Um, all right, what month does Oktoberfest start? We're starting you off a little easy here. Maybe this should have been the last question after you've already had a little of right. years. <laughs> Maybe so, we'll it up. Yeah, what month does Oktoberfest start? Is it September? Is it October? Or is it all year round and it never ends? Mm, um, so, I like that answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll be popping up a few full questions throughout as we go so that you can learn a little bit about Oktoberfest and feel like you're in Germany. Um, you have to help make sure that I don't reveal any of the quiz answers. You might. So that also means just pay attention because maybe <laughs> you'll get a quiz, quiz answer right because of something that Evan has told Whoops. us. Um, before we jump into our Oktoberfest celebrations, I did want to just quickly mention our up and coming. Oh, yeah. We've got an exciting kit coming up Cisco next kit, month. kit, just to get people like excited. is isn't super exciting, especially because look at these fancy duds. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... Um, especially because I know we have some people who aren't currently members here. So next month, Sip Scout Kit. We're very we We're going to be doing a new designation category, or, or category rather, um, recognized by the TTV. U.S. government, by the TTV. Uh, we're going to be doing American Single Malt. So more well-known from their Scottish counterpart. Uh, these are some beautiful representations of... We have to grab a couple of those bottles right there just so we can show you a couple of the makers that are going to be in it. Um, so American Single Malt is brand new, like Evan said. Um, well, it's not brand new. People have been making American Single Malt for a while, but it's officially recognized now as a style. Um, and so we have Damp Work. We have Cole Keegan from Santa Fe Spirits. We have Jetty Wave over there, Boulder Spirits. Um, a lot of really fun American History. Single Malt. And What's the sixth one? What am I spacing? Boulder Spirit 10th Street. Oh, I'm spacing at the moment as well. I'll think of it momentarily. You just made all the labels. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, so American single malts are super exciting. Um, because you know, we've all been into whiskey for a while. Most of us have been. 
you probably know bourbon pretty well. You probably dabbled in a little bit of rye maybe. And American Single Malt is up and coming and it's new. And honestly, we were just at a conference for craft distillers um, in Vegas about, I don't know, three weeks ago, a month ago. And all the distillers were talking about like move over bourbon. Mm -hmm. Like American Single Malt is going to be, is, is going to be America's whiskey. Like they really believe this is, is going to be true and that um, it's just going to change the landscape completely. And so for people who really like scotch, to really kind of play with American single malt and learn about those. It's a very exciting kit. It, even if you're a member, if you have someone, you know, who you know loves whiskey, let them know about this because this is going to be really fun. And, and most exciting of all, at least four of the distillers are going to be joining us at our monthly sub scout party next week because they're so excited yeah. to connect with people like you who are interested in whiskey and they want to talk to you about this new category and what they're doing. So that's going to be really exciting. You're not going to hear as much from us. You'll finally get a break from our, <laughs> our jibber jabbering and, um, and you'll get to hear from the distillers themselves. So it's going to be a really kind of collaborative, fun, fun yeah, event. With you know, pick the brain whiskey. of some uh, creative, innovative distillers. Yeah, the spot to be. Join us for sure. All right, but back to Oktoberfest. Shall we crack into our beers? Yeah, so sure. if you got your Sip Scout kit in time, crack open this one here, the Fort George half liter. And if you got uh, the backup, or I guess I should say maybe replacement, re replacement extra, um, go ahead and bust open the Occidental Fest beer here. Uh, <clears throat> now, the fun thing about this half liter is so most most beers of this size are 16 ounces hey what do you know one pint yeah 500 and i'm sorry 473 milliliters so not quite a half a liter exactly and so fort george decided to make this one in exactly a half liter so it's 16.9 ounces this can instead of the normal 16 ounce can um because and this is why i'm using this glass here they really wanted it to fit perfectly in one of these mugs here. My head's maybe a little small. It it's at, right at the line though. Right at the line, right at the line. So yeah, so this is our first beer that we will be enjoying and we'll be pouring into this because- Seems appropriate. Yeah. Um, Cheers. Rose. Rose. Cheers to all of you. Um, so one of the fun things that kicks off our Oktoberfest every year in uh, the town square, I'm sorry, in the city square in Munich, Theresa Wein, um, which is one of the namesakes of or people that the uh, festival began for, the mayor of Munich uh, cracks the first tap or cracks the first keg, taps the first keg, and as he does so, says, Oak falls. Uh, and essentially that means it's open and uh, time to drink. Yeah, so, so everyone's standing around waiting for the mayor to yeah. say that, and then Oktoberfest officially Oak begins. Office. It's open. Let's go. <laughs> Yum diggity. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Oktoberfest style beers, because I'm sure all of you, you know, as you're shopping around this time of year, there's all sorts of fest beers everywhere, right? Yeah. And you see Oktoberfest, you see fest beer. Um, the and, and then you also see Merzen is right. another kind of thing that you don't maybe don't That's see all year long that all of a sudden you're seeing right now. So tell us a little bit about these different styles. Certainly. So uh, essentially, um, Oktoberfest beer, you know, the beer that is consumed in Munich for Oktoberfest um, has historically been a beer like Merzen. And Merzen is a beer that is actually probably a little bit closer in style to this one. And the color and the richness is one of the main things that delineate Meritzen from Fest beer that uh, is more representative of the half liter that Suzanne is enjoying. <clears throat> and Meritzen is- like that, how I just took the bigger beer for myself and gave, gave Evan the little piece <laughs> of glasses. We've got <laughs> <laughs> um, But, you know, Meritzen is got a, a little bit deeper amber color. Uh, it's a little bit more full-bodied and richer than Fest beers. And that style of beer shifted towards this uh, Fest beer style in the 1990s is kind of when uh, that really began to take, home, to take hold. I believe that it was first developed by Polliner, which is one of the six beers or six breweries rather that is permitted to be served 
in the actual Oktoberfest uh, beer tents uh, throughout the 100 acres that is. Yeah, so if you didn't know that, there are only, right, in, in the actual Oktoberfest grounds, the official ones, because there's festivals going on all over Germany, sure. probably, right? But the official Oktoberfest grounds, only six breweries are allowed to make and serve their beers. Yeah, right. Precisely. Like they're, they're like designated by the country. And they're the six breweries that are in Munich. Mm -hmm. um, so those six breweries are the ones that are permitted to be there. Um, and yeah, Polliner is one of them. They they made this style essentially to offer something that's a little bit lighter bodied, um, something that is a little more poundable, if you will. <laughs> uh, you know, for day drinking, day drinking, Oktoberfest. Yeah, we're often drinking. Drinkability is kind of the main reason that they shifted to something that's a little less um, rich and intense, like Kamerzin beers. Um, because yeah, you know, it's a sixteen day long festival and people are there it's free too so people that are local you know the majority of people that are there are residents of, of munich um and the surrounding areas of course uh and so they're there every day drinking and you know that, that uh it it's takes a toll, a toll. <laughs> so, for sure yeah um, and so um back to our poll question yay we tricked one person <laughs> or actually the name of it tricked one person um october Fest actually starts in september so it's a it's a common kind of misnomer and it actually only goes until like the first few days of October mm -hmm. typically or into like the first weekend of October so it's mostly in September um and th it didn't shift way back when I think it did yeah right? I think it used it, to be most fully in October correct yeah historians are unsure as to when it shifted um but the original Oktoberfest uh was a celebration of the wedding between uh Therese uh, hence Therese Fine is the you know the, the grounds there and Prince Ludwig who later became the king um and their wedding day was i believe october 12th in 19 or 1810 so this festival has been going on for a very long time um <clears throat> and the festival began i'm probably giving away so many full questions aren't i <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> but it's good it's all good yep I sure like enough it. i love it just gave that one away we'll see if everyone like caught sentence it sentence ago we'll see if everyone was <laughs> listening <laughs> uh and but we're testing you too, because there's a lot of information on Oktoberfest. So maybe you could have said like 1815, you know, 12. <laughs> maybe you're not right. <laughs> the uh, wedding coincided with, you know, there's a big parade at the end of it, a festival in this in this big garden uh, in the middle of, of Munich. But the primary reason everyone was there was for this like royal wedding. Right? Precisely. It was a royal yeah, There was a festival and, that was thrown for the wedding. Right. And it's basically what happened. Uh, there was a horse race. Uh, there it was like agricultural prizes for the biggest pumpkin uh <laughs> things right. like that um and the festival you know was held every year uh after that um adding food halls and and drinks i think around the 1820s maybe eight, i think maybe 1817 or 1818 was when they first had food and beverages that were offered there and of course that's now one of the biggest things and biggest draws right uh for this festival um but October, the weather is questionable, you know, and even in September, uh, they're not being able to confidently say, yeah, come and wear your shorts, because uh, they want everyone to wear in their cute outfits. Yeah, <laughs> um, but hist historians don't really know specifically when it was moved back, um, but sometime in the last 200 plus years, it shifted from uh, the early part of October to the mid part of September. Yeah. Uh, just going into the early part of October. So you get to start celebrating in September like we are this year. Yeah. yeah. Last year we did this in October and we were like, mm, technically we're late. <laughs> we are late. <laughs> technically it's we're all not open. doing this right. But this so, year it's all going on right now. Yeah. So a few um, details about Oktoberfest. So annual attendance, over 6 million people. Can you imagine 6 million people are going to this over the course of 16 days? It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and coming from 55 different countries over a two-week period, mm -hmm. so like it's very, it's a big draw. We have not been yet. We can't wait to go. We have to. That's like on our list. But there's a lot of a lot, a lot of drinking things on our list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they go through seven million liters of beer. Seven million liters of beer. Anyone who you want to guess roughly how much that is in a way that you can wrap your brain around? Yeah. So. How many Olympic-sized swimming pools is there? Mm. Eight lanes, 
seven feet wide each and six feet deep. You've seen an Olympic swimming pool if you've ever watched the Olympics because swimming is the whole freaking time. And this is a half liter. So how many liter, how many double of this? Yeah. Wow. It, That's seven million of these, double of these. How many pools is it? It's roughly four Olympic sized swimming pools. That seems smaller than I would think. Each honestly. Olympic sized swimming pool is about a half a million gallons. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah this is gallons. I was talking about uh, you were you mentioned the liters. liters. Seven million liters. It's about two million gallons. Wow. Um, if memory serves that, yeah. that approximation. That's a lot of beer. Yeah, CJ was said one pool. I'm thinking four pools. I'm like, I was thinking it was gonna be like 30 pools or something. Like, <laughs> but at least, I mean, yeah, yeah that's about, a lot. Like take one sip out of the Olympic sized pool and how much does it go down? <laughs> you can't be negligible. Like yeah. And then the also thing to note is that in Germany, the beer drinking age is actually 16. Correct. Um, so yeah, spirits yeah. and wine, you can drink 18. starting at 18, but yeah. you can drink beer at 16. And Germany. if you do go to Oktoberfest, lucky you. Um, if anyone's been to Oktoberfest who's here, throw it in the chat because we definitely want to hear from you later. Um, if you go to Oktoberfest, it is cash only. So mm -hmm. bring your mm -hmm. cash with you. Um, yeah. And, you know, in Germany, they do have this, how do you pronounce it? The beer law, right? The Reichsgebot. Reichsgebot. Yeah. Um, that it's a 500 year old law that basically mandates that beer can only be made from the four ingredients that beer should only be made right. from, really um, water, hop, yeast, and malt. So you can't add anything else to it. Yeah, you don't see any fruit flavored beers there, anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just, just those basic four ingredients. And actually, the, the Reichsgebot was uh, the German purity law was, I believe, the first law pertaining to the production of alcohol anywhere in the world for. Oh, for any purpose. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, what? 500 years ago, who was regulating alcohol production? It was what? mostly the church that was making it to begin with. What about gosas? Aren't those, don't those often have fruit in them? Do they not put fruit in them in Germany? That's just the thing we do. I think that they do, but I don't think that those qualify under the Reichsgebot okay. for what could be, you know, labeled as a beer. Got it. I Maybe see. isn't even labeled that way. I see. Okay. okay. Cool. But yeah, but you're right. And also, um, um, what's the other one that they add fruit to, like when they serve it? Um, I'm blanking. White, on it's a, the sour, the white and. Yep. Nope. It'll come to us. Yeah. <laughs> Later. It'll come to us. Um, <laughs> yeah. But this first beer that we're drinking over here is Fort George, mm -hmm. and they are from Astoria, Oregon. Um, and, you know, their Astoria actually used to be called Fort George um, back in the day when King George um, was overseeing Britain, and it was a kind of under Brit British control. Um, so the, the place that is Astoria now was called Fort George, which is where the name of their brewery comes from, or kind of hearkening back to the history in the past. And that area was devastated by fire a few times. The building that the Fort George Brewery is in is actually it was built in 1921 and like the whole area and city was devastated by fire in 1922 and this building is like still there and they kind of brought it back and now there's a brewery and I think a bakery in there um but they really you know pride themselves on using local ingredients as much as they can and really you know leaning into making delicious beers like this one and this is one that's in one? collaboration yeah. with a brewery called Stoop Brewery that's right and um Actually, let me pull it up. I have it right here. I know exactly what you're thinking. We reached out to the uh, to the head the brewer there at Fort George and asked them about the nature of the collaboration. Um, right, because it said that it was a collaboration between them and Soup Brewing, or or right, Soup, yeah. And but it didn't say anything about the collaboration really. Right. It just said like this brewery and this brewery, and we were like, well, what does that mean? Like, how did you collaborate? What was the collaboration? And so what he sent us back, I just want to read it to you because it, it just gives you an appreciation for, you know, we all drink beer all the time. We take sips of it. It seems like one of the most kind of simple alcohols out there, right? Like it seems like crushable, easy to drink. And his response about what that meant, collaboration, I was just like, man, that makes you appreciate what goes into a single beer so much more. So this is, this is what he said. This collaboration was a collaboration throughout the whole process. We chatted on what we would first like to see in a fest beer and dove down into each ingredient to make that happen. We used rarer pills, R-A-H-R, -R, rarer pills, since it has quite a bready profile and then backed it up with some Weyermann specialty malt. 
We use Weyermann for those since we believe that they have a lot more character than the American malts of the same variety. Brad really liked using Hercules for bittering lagers, and we wanted a little fruity character, so we added in some pets and some sapphire. The fear, I think. We decided to get we decided to use Augustiner yeast since it is our house lager yeast at the fort, and it plays very well with many of the styles of lager. Fermentation profile was decided based upon our history with the yeast and what we were trying to get out of it. We fermented it on the colder side of the yeast drain to keep the profile clean and then ramped it up at the tail end to clean up the sulfur that this yeast can throw. What? Like, and you're like, wait, it's just beer though, right? <laughs> like it just, it really makes your appreciation for, especially, you know, when you're drinking beers and you're like, wow, this beer is really good. Like how much thought really goes into it mm -hmm. when you're deciding how to make a certain flavor profile, how to bring this to life, what you want it to taste like, smell like, look like, um, you know, and he wrote lots more after that, but we just thought that was a really like enlightening, you know, what, tell, tell me about this beer. You yeah, know? <laughs> and, and just to kind of decipher that a little bit, um, as it does kind of pertain very nicely to the flavor profile of this, uh, first off there, uh, the Weyermann malt that, that he was talking about, generally the malt characteristic that you're using to make best beers include Munich malt and uh, a Pilsner malt. Uh, and they're usually about half and half, um, totally about 80%, and then five, ten percent of other richer malts to give a little bit more backbone, which, you know, this is not quite as light as a straight pilsner. Um, and you're getting some of the color from those richer malts that make up that other 20 percent. And then the aroma that you get from this is pretty standard for this style of beer. I think this is a really good representation of a fest beer. Um, it's got, <clears throat> you know, a fair bit of malt profile i think that's definitely what leads here but the malt or the hop profile is present you know there's there's some floral characteristics to it um the aromatics are quite bright uh lots of kind of doughy um toasty flower uh like biscuit type aromas but there is a little bit of like kind of a hint of what you might guess to be like a sweet white wine almost to the moment, like that floral kind of a little bit almost fruity, but fruit is not something that I feel like I'm getting much in this at all. Um, and that's really the kind of the focus uh, of having something that's very flavorful, but you can still drink a lot of it because it's not super dense. And yeah, it's, it's not, really a delicious beer. Yeah, very well balanced. It has like a smoothness on the sides of my tongue a little bit mm -hmm. this is like refreshing almost yeah. um, it's really it's quite lovely uh and then one other fun thing to note about that uh, you know and part of the reason that um i agree that we should share it is while the yeast characteristic isn't something that you recognize a lot in the flavor profile yeast is obviously very important that's what makes all alcohol possible right um and the specific yeast that they chose to use is augustiner augustiner is one of the six breweries that exist in Munich and you can enjoy at the Oktoberfest uh, festival there. Curiously though, it's the only one that is not exported. So, and if, unless you go there, you don't get an opportunity to try it. I'd like to think that this is a, a sound representation of, you know, hopefully what Augustine are taking with. And uh, did I give away another? No, no, <laughs> you just gave a little hint. That was one of the options. It reminded me to keep going with the poll. Um, and I think Augustiner is the one that is pretty unanimously agreed is the best one at Oktoberfest. That's the rumor. Right. That's the um, rumor. And not surprisingly, most countries keep the best stuff for themselves. Yep. <laughs> um, so I remember when I went to Argentina to go to Melbeck region, I was like, I like Melbeck. I, I drink it here. Um, I enjoy it, but it's not like, wow. And I went to Argentina and I was drinking like $15 bottles of Malbec and I was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I was like, you guys keep all the good stuff for yeah. yourselves. So same idea. They don't export it and apparently it's the best. So I guess we all got to make a little sip scout group trip to October. Would that would be fun or that would be so fun. Um, yeah. Swiss does, uh, Switzerland does the same thing with their wine. Probably their chocolate too. Uh, I mean, <laughs> But you, never, you, you don't, you don't ever see chocolate Swiss wine out yeah. in the, you know, in the markets. You don't see Swiss wine. No, at all. Not at all. Um, and then the, the hop profile, um, you know, there's, there's two kind of primary categories, delineations within hops. And 
they're either bittering hops or aromatic hops. Um, and, you know, he mentioned that there was a little bit of the bittering hops, the Hercules hops, but most of what they're using were uh, traditional noble hops. Um, uh, he mentioned Tet Tetnanger, and then uh, throughout the collection of these skyscrapers, you're going to see um, a lot of uh, hops like Salt and uh, Hollertau and Hirschbrucker. Uh, these are all hops that categorize them or are categorized as aromatic hops. So you're not going to get like that same kind of bitterness that you see in a lot of American IPAs um, in these in these beers. The hops are mainly used to retain freshness and give a little bit of kind of that bright aromatic profile. Um, speaking of freshness, mm -hmm. and this is probably going to be another quiz bowl that I'm going to give away. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Where are you going with this? Um, the term or the name Merzen. Oh, yeah. Uh, anybody know what that, uh, what that translates to? Um, Let's see. Yep. March. Yep. Nice. Yeah. So why are we drinking a beer named for March at October? In October. So it's kind of weird. The first time someone asked me that, I was like, I don't know, because there's a parade and they're like <laughs> they're marching. marching. <laughs> uh, That's a good guess. That's a good guess. I don't know. I just thought it was feasible. Yeah. Um, well, the beer uh -huh. was Tom's on it. Yep. Before refrigeration, you know, before a, you know, electricity, um, lagers can only be made in the cooler times of the year. And so they would make the lager in March. That was the latest that they could make it. And then it would age until it was time for Oktoberfest. And they'd crack that beer open. Yeah. Um, goat bladder is not the translation of America. <laughs> but but, but you can maybe Jay drink Marathon help. out of a goat bladder. But Jay did help us out earlier. And if this is what you were actually thinking of, and I said I couldn't think of it, I'm going to like die laughing. Were you thinking of Hefeweizen? No, the fruit but in? it is a, it is. A, you do put fruit in that too. Yeah. Yeah. But this one, you actually like put fruit syrup in. And it is uh -huh. a wheat beer. It just doesn't have that coriander orange kind of flavor profile mm -hmm. of And it's sour. It's a sour wheat beer. I think I this beer. Interesting. Uh, we're going to have to, we're going to have to look it up. Figure it out. Driving me crazy. Um, the one brewery you will not find at Oktoberfest is actually Iyengar. Um, So that is the one you will find Spotten and Augustina, as we mentioned, uh, and Lowenbrow. And Shocker, uh, Shocker, Shocker Shore. Shocker. That one I have a hard time. Don't help answer. me. Don't look at me. For Shocker help. Hoar, Lowenbrow, Hofbrow, Staten, uh, Polliner, and Augustina are the are the six. One of those was the recent edition. <clears throat> Have any of you tried your pretzels yet? They oh look gosh. they look so they look so basic. They look like all right. They sent me some hard they, like we don't know why we are obsessed with these pretzels. <laughs> we love them. Um, this is pretty common food at the uh, Oktoberfest. Um, one of the most heavily eaten things though there is uh, well, strangely anybody anybody any chicken. Roast chicken, roast chicken. They crush roast chicken. I actually think I have a stat on that. In, yeah, Zach, pretzels are in the original kit. When you get your kit, you'll get them <laughs> for sure. Um, sorry, you don't have them now. They're really, they're really freaking delicious. <laughs> you will enjoy them with the beers that you get in your kit when it gets to you. So, bonus. Um, during Oktoberfest, they eat five hundred thousand roast chickens. 500,000 roast chickens. Crazy. Yeah. They really it's like an Olympic-sized swimming pool full of chicken. <laughs> That's a funnier visual. That's a hilarious visual. Um, um, curiously enough, this year, there's controversy at Oktoberfest. Oh, I didn't hear this. Yeah. I didn't share this with you. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of controversy at Oktoberfest this year because there has been a, an effort to kind of make Oktoberfest a little bit more sustainable. Um, in various ways, and some of them have impacted it uh, as far as the guest experience to lesser degrees, but apparently they moved to make all of the roast chicken there organic this year. Oh, interesting. And it's caused the cost of the chicken to sure, rise right. by about sure. 50%. Wow. So people that would otherwise come in there and enjoy chicken um, are opting to just have bratwurst and pretzels and you know, 
cheese bread and sauerkraut and stuff like that instead of what they would have otherwise been drinking, which is the roast chicken. Um, it's interesting that they would address the chicken before, like, I don't know, the grains that they're making the beer with. No. Although, yeah, I guess organic grains might be um, a bigger ask. So this, so this Occidental is not American? Because it really looks and kind of drinks no, like, like one. I believe it is. You I believe it that, is? They just aren't, aren't I think that labeling the, it properly? I think that the use of the term best beer there might be questionable. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we thought this was going to be um, an Oktoberfest style beer, a fest beer. Um, but it does seem like it's American to me, for sure. And it is 6.3 ABV, so I feel like this. But look at that cuteness of the can. Look at it. I love it. It's a, it's a very adorable can. Um, so I looked up a little about Octanol Brewing today, since this is a last minute ad. And they're kind of interesting. So they're in Portland, Oregon. And they were founded with the goal of making what they call well-balanced continental style beers. And so they found a niche with beer drinkers who basically, they, they were founded in 2011. And by doing these like well-balanced continental style beers, they basically found a niche with beer drinkers who were just getting sick of the like hops arms race with IPAs. They felt like every brewery was going IPA crazy and there were like IPAs everywhere and hops, 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 hops. And so they decided to start a brewery that was kind of the antithesis of the, I can't say that word, anti antithesis. That, antithesis of that. Thank you. Um, and really, we're focusing on a lot of German style beers, primarily Kolsch's, you know, things mm -hmm. of that nature. Hello. So mm -hmm. this is, you know, this is kind of their bread and butter. This is their wheelhouse. And, you know, Oktoberfest, they kind of shine. But they did, um, they did actually, after, after COVID, which is kind of interesting, they launched a new brand called Further Beer. And this gives their brewers kind of freedom to experiment with new ingredients and kind of play with different styles that don't fit in that category namely IPAs. <laughs> um, so, you know, everyone well, folds eventually. I know, I know. It's too like lucrative. Everyone tries to avoid the IPA poll and eventually they're like, well, we'll do a few IPAs, <laughs> but, but they launched a different, but we're going to put it into a brand, different brand. Right. Um, to do that. And they do other experimental things as well, not just IPAs, but some experimental things. So their brewers can basically kind of play and not only make German style beers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're kind of a cool spot in Portland to check out for sure. What are we moving on to next here? Well, since this was American was not in fact the fest beer style that I thought it was going to be. Yeah, we should probably I if we should be we want one. those of you who got these supplemental beers to try a traditional fest beer. This one I think is American. This one as well. Oh, maybe not. October. It is hard August. because. Yeah, it does say Mertzen style lager. Yeah, the, the, the confusion often lies in that true Oktoberfest beer, all one word, is really only produced by those six breweries in Munich. Um, Oktoberfest style beer, or just something that says Oktoberfest, uh, could kind of be either. Could kind of be either the true like fest beer style, or it could be more of the historic precedent, which was the Mertzen. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, naming conventions are not very well established here in the United States for things like this, the way that they are in Germany. <clears throat> yeah. So if, for those of you, we're not going to open this Bob beer, mostly because Evan's dad is named Bob and he's German. And he loves and it's called Fest Bob, beer. It's called Bobtoberfest. I don't even know if he's going to open it. But... Yeah. <laughs> he will. He'll you think so? He'll just keep the can. <laughs> keep the can. Yeah. No, your dad likes beer. Um, so we're going to save this to open with Bob when he's here with us. But if any of you who have this kit want to open this one up and let us know if you think it's an Oktoberfest style beer or a Mertzen, um, we would be interested. We would know. be interested to know that because it's yeah. I, I I would imagine it's an Oktoberfest style beer based on it just says Oktoberfest lager, but as opposed to but fest they thought this one was going to be as well. Right. So we will see. We will find out. Oh, we're we're split on this question. We don't we don't know the answer to this one. We're all split. Yeah, it, this is a seasonal favorite, mm -hmm. traditional Oktoberfest for Martin. Oh, that's I think it's, I think that's when it says fest beer. That's why I was thinking that this one was going to be more similar to the half acre. All right. So do you tie it on the right, on your left, in the middle, or on the back? 
Ooh. No, you don't have to stand up. <laughs> but I want. <laughs> Evan wants to show off his whole costume too. So, so what costume with an outfit? Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. So since I am taken, it is on your right. That is where you. Ooh. You had a little a little hint if you checked out my bundle. Yeah. Um, and you know our relationship status. <laughs> I think. <laughs> If you've Break, been here maybe before. Breaking news. We're together. <laughs> um, all right. So what do you, you want to, let's do the Smogtoberfest because everyone has the Smogtoberfest. Oh and that is a Merson. And so for those of you who joined us in opening the half liter first, um, this is your typical kind of fest year. And then this one will be the Merson and you can kind of compare and contrast the two of them together. Smogtoberfest. Mm -hmm. Sounds dirty. <laughs> can you can you guess where where Smog Town, Smog City is from? Ooh, ooh, I know. Los Angeles. Wait, am I right? Yeah, Torrance. Torrance, California. Close enough. Yeah. No, same for sure. Same, it's the same smog pile. Yeah. So they're interesting. They um oh, and this is later. Yeah. Interesting. Certainly lighter than, the, than the other one. Yeah, pretty close to that. It is pretty close to that. No, see, they're all confusing us with their their labeling here. It is it is challenging this time of year, but usually it will say somewhere on the back label, Merson specifically, if it is. Typically. Often, often. Although no, no. And this one says festival logger. Yeah. Man, they just don't want to make it easy for anybody. See, this is why these laws that they have in Germany and other places are so helpful because it really like locks down sure. what. <laughs> what you're drinking and what you're doing and how you're labeling. So one of the fun mm -hmm. tips and techniques that we like to share when you're drinking beer and you're mm. tasting beer, um, pour a little bit and as it foams up like that, just before it gets to the top, carefully, maybe when it's not up over More the top. More high level. Yeah. Put your hand on the top and kind of let the bubbles do their work. And release some aromas, and then and trap the hand, trap yeah, trap them in there, and then stick your nose in there and take a whiff um, as a way to kind of really evaluate, concentrate the aromas, yeah. and really smell it a little more. And we and we we actually so these little tasting glasses, you might think we only use them for these events. We use them all the time, like at home. Like we we split a beer pretty much every week. We both want to try whatever beer we're drinking, um, and so we just split them in here, and that way. The whole time you're drinking it, it's cold. We'll put the rest of the can in the fridge if we're, you know, and then re pour it. Because if you do open some of these and you want to save it for a little later, if you put it in the fridge, it will keep the carbonation a lot better. We have a little cooler down here. Actually, you might see us reaching down here occasionally. So we're keeping ours kind of cold um, and trying to keep them cold because it does keep the carbonation and keeps that alive a little longer if it's already open. <clears throat> so we love these for splitting beers with someone else in the house or just honestly I even when I'm home alone I pour it in this and put the rest of the can in there to keep it cold and then go refill it afterwards I really enjoy it and we pretty much never drink out of the cans um, because you're totally missing this whole aroma piece when you drink it out of the can and if you've ever been sick before and you know your partner orders a pizza when you're sick and you're all excited thinking like that's gonna and it tastes like cardboard nothing because your nose is stuffed and you're sick like if you can't smell what you're eating or drinking, you're missing out on like 80% of the flavors as well. Um, so it's really important to be able to take your nose in there. One of the things that helps that um, leads nicely into Jay's question, uh, what temperature should I be drinking these at? Uh, and generally dark lagers and amber lagers are intended to be consumed a little bit warmer than fridge temperature essentially. Uh, you certainly don't want to have them on ice, uh, but around 40 to 45 degrees is usually pretty optimal for a, a darker lager like the Merton. And even the amber one, even the Fest beer, I would say uh, it probably is best served a little bit uh, out of the out of the fridge for five minutes or something like that. Yeah. It'll warm up as you open it and drink it too. <laughs> yeah, we often we often joke, there's a reason why you drink Coors Light and Bud Light, ice, 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 ice cold. Right. Like if there's really delicious flavors and aromas and things going on in there, you want it a little bit warmer because that helps you be able to smell them and taste them. But if it's really you're drinking for effect and it doesn't have a lot of flavor or aroma, the colder it is, the more muted it tastes. And so even, you know, when we go out to eat and we get served white wine at a restaurant, 
oftentimes they're pulling it straight out of the fridge and pouring it in my glass. And I sit there with my hands on the bowl of the glass, warming it up for a minute because I can't smell it. I can't taste it. It just like kind of kills all of that when it's too cold. Yeah, I mean, in some bars, they keep the white wine in a nice bucket with beer. Mm -hmm. you know? It just depends on the place. But... No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, most... not our recommendation. Do what you want, drink it the way you want, but drink it how you enjoy it for sure. Yeah. But most, most of America serves red wine too warm and white wine too cold. And if you bring them... And towards the middle, I mean, I feel like it, it kind of applies to beer too. Most beer is served at like 34 degrees. You, you keep the, you know, those kegs yeah. and there's, you know, glycol lines to keep the lines cold and they are served as cold as they can get them before they start to produce. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's a fun little fact about Oktoberfest that I always like to share. So there is a beer police squad at Oktoberfest. And you might think that the beer police squad is there to keep the unruly Hooligans. <laughs> under control but the beer police squad is actually there to make sure that the beer in your these when they're full leaders are called moth and it's like um what is this that weird backwards b thing it looks like a b but it's two s's yeah um so a, a full leader the glass is called a moth and so the beer in your moth is supposed to come up to that line on the glass which equals a full leader and sometimes you may get a glass that's a tiny bit not as full. And the beer police squad is there to enforce that. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So they have a whole team of police going around just like eyeballing where they're pouring and being like, no, 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 no. You shorted them a few sips there. Like they, they take it very seriously. I'm glad they're there on our side. Yeah. They, they, they does say that it rarely happens and that the people who are pouring the beers at Oktoberfest are masters of their craft and know how to just like time it without even thinking. I imagine, if day. anything, they're overpouring. Because the yeah, leader it line... It doesn't say they're enforcing that at all. <laughs> like, the leader line... It's so, yeah. It's very easy to hit that and still get a nice head without being concerned about... Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, ma is a German word describing the amount of beer in a regulation mug. Regulation mug. <laughs> in modern times, exactly one liter moth is also <clears throat> a common... <clears throat> Pretzel. Oh, did you already pour me one of these? Yeah. Oh, darn. Now, now, I have, have, now we have three. <laughs> now I have too many beers. Um, yeah, Moss Krug, I think is the, the, full, official. the full official name for it. It's funny, I really want to go to Oktoberfest, but like with every passing year, I get a little more and more nervous about it. Like, I, I'm just not sure if it's going to be like this wild rager of like college party, like this, like, oh man, this is like too much for me, or if it's going to be really like a culturally like you know like or if it's somewhere in between like it, it does feel very overwhelming and I have heard it's kind of similar to Burning Man for those of you who are familiar with Burning Man where it's like you really want to go with people who have been before and well, people who like no because there I think there's a lot of like get your tickets for these tents at a certain time there's these activities there's these like if you want to go to restaurants the week you're there like that's a whole ordeal like i think there's a lot of like logistical to maximize your experience you got to kind of know what you're doing a little bit yeah i mean with that, as many people as are going yeah. and i do understand that the beer halls um it's not like reservations mm -hmm. for the beer halls go on sale at the same time for all the beer halls each beer hall um run by each of these each brewery six breweries yeah uh, i think there's there's more than just the six in terms of halls there are other halls that also do food and van and things like that it's just that those six beers are the only ones that are sold there um and when each one of them puts their reservations up for you know for grabs at different times and with different stipulations, yeah. like minimum of eight people, minimum of 10 people. Yeah. That's the other reason it'd be nice to go with other people that have been before because you need a lot of people to, you know, get a get a table. Maybe, a reservation. maybe we'll have to, we'll, we'll expense it and we'll go scope it out for all of you and we'll like figure it out and then we'll plan a trip for all of us. <laughs> I do feel like I know a few people who have gone and they, they have said it's like, yeah, it's very helpful to, to do that. Yeah, Jay, I agree. Six million from around the world does sound more like best yeah. than just like. But at the same time, it's a family-friendly event. You know, kids are there, at least until like the early evening. Kids as young as 
as infants are there. I think after like you know seven or eight or something like that, anyone under the age of six has to go. But still, that means that there's you know twelve yeah. year olds hanging out until the festival closes. Well, in legal drinking age is sixteen, so they're sixteen year olds there the whole time. Yeah. Um, so I feel like in that regard, it's probably you know there's probably some people that get drunk, but I don't think it's like the Americans. <laughs> I don't know. I get that's probably part of my thing is like when I've gone to American Oktoberfest, they right. they're just like shit show. And culturally, you know? I do feel like while Germans are like excited and um, passionate about something, uh, soccer maybe, mm -hmm. they're not a particularly exuberant yeah, true. Uh, people, at least my dad's side of the family isn't. Yeah, it's a little more restrained, a little yeah, more reserved, okay. for sure. Where in Munich does Oktoberfest take place? Oh, whoever answered the Waffen is very close. It's just a different spelling down there, the Weissen. Um, Therese Weissen, it's basically is Teresa's green tree. So it's the, uh, the, bride. Got the, the bride from, was it Saxony Hilbrandtville? Saxon Hilbrandt, uh, Hilbrandt Burger? No, <laughs> no, no clue there. That married the prince, uh, Prince Ludwig. All you. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do you think of this Oktoberfest? I, I feel like it's it's so fun because like we always we love Oktoberfest. We love this event. We love doing this every year. But the the style it's one style of beer, you know, or two styles of beer really. And so sometimes it can be a little bit like these all kind of taste the same. Mm -hmm. But I feel like these three that we've tasted so far are very unique, actually, considering they're very similar in style. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Comparing this one to the half acre, um, I would say this one has a little bit more like maybe nuttiness mm -hmm. and almost like a little bit of like white chocolate. It definitely has a sweetness to it to me, or mm -hmm. on the nose in particular, like a roasty sweetness, almost like chocolate covered almond. Yeah, like I get that like nutty, like, 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 like nut and chocolate, like, like or like. Cashew, mm -hmm. cashew butter. I think it's going to go delicious with the pretzel. How many more pretzels do we have? Okay. <laughs> Which of these will you not find at Oktoberfest? Mm. Oh, see, you just killed that one too. I feel like elementary school, school field trips, I probably would have guessed, but it is true. There are a lot of families there. Um, Religious math, there's definitely a crossbow shooting range for sure. Um, I know that much. And then the religious math, yeah, there's a crossbow shooting tent actually. So you can go into a tent and like mm -hmm. practice your crossbow shooting, which would be pretty fun. Too. I don't know about that, but um, and then there is a traditional Oktoberfest church service that takes place every year in one of the tents, so there is actually a religious mass there. Um, and it's mostly for the employees, actually, of Oktoberfest, but anyone can go in and attend if they want to. Interesting. Um, and there are school-sponsored field trips. So, you know, the schools bring the kids there to teach them all about the culture and teach them all about, you know, Oktoberfest and the history. history. Um, Bavarian history. And there are a lot of horses at Oktoberfest, especially because there was, you know, originally, I think, that was a horse race. Yeah. Um, but apparently riding the horses is very much frowned upon, so no pony rides. Oh, <laughs> that's too bad. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that while the horse races kind of disappeared by the end of the 19th century, um, my recollection is that they brought them back on the bicentennial in, uh, I guess that was in 2010, and did a horse race again. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. We're actually, I'm bringing, um, oh, yeah, you guys are from math. I think maybe we talked about this last last month, maybe. Um, we're going home to visit my parents in a week, and they live in Massachusetts, and there's a big festival um, there called the Baby that we are going to be going to. And it, there's a it's a fairground, and there are six permanent buildings on the fairground. They're, all, they're, they're modeled after the state buildings of each of the New England states. And so there's a Massachusetts State Building and a New Hampshire State Building. 
and they're permanent and part of the fairground and so they're there year round and they can be used for other things and so that always makes me think of this but yeah, they're a permanent fairground that that kind of stumps me because i would guess that they that they are at october fest just because they're massive but mm -hmm. i can't imagine that that you know municipal park is you think you could use them for other things you know like have other events there have service to lay there have all right you know, let's see um, it all right the answer is the big reveal fall yeah okay they so don't. each year the whole october fest is constructed from scratch and then taken down afterwards the construction begins in june so they start building it in june um and but the planning for it starts like in march and then it's all broken down and put away but it takes three thousand workers 10 weeks to construct october fest and then it takes five weeks to take it all down yeah, that's not sustainable. Or how, what are they, why are they caring about yeah, chicken? Yeah, Jay said the same thing. That does not sound sustainable. <laughs> why are they caring about chicken? Well, I mean, I guess they're giving some people some jobs. Right? I wonder if they deconstruct it and then reconstruct it using the same material area. Because it's like five I would think. I would hope so. I would think that they're not like from scratch. I would hope. I mean, that that, that could be part of their sustainability initiative, I would imagine. <laughs> All right, I'm going to breeze us through some of these. Um, yeah, yeah. while you're doing that, but I was also thinking when you said 3,000 workers, 10 weeks, 6 million people, some of these tents, so the biggest tents I think hold 12,000 people. Ooh, so it's like, uh, you know, a college basketball arena. Um, and even the even like the small ones still fit 1,000 people. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> That's huge. Yeah. That's so big. Yeah, it's a lot of work for sure. Oh, you know this one. You said this at the beginning of the session. Oh, that's right. I did. And a couple of you remembered. <laughs> but I also Good said job. the other one that people are remembering. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So the, how do you say the first one? I'm Hitzkibel. That's the law, the German purity law. The German law. purity law about how to make beer. And the Ozapsis is what they say to say. Ozapsis. Yeah. <laughs> To kick off Oktoberfest for sure. Zach, did you open up the Bobtoberfest? I'm curious if it, you're thinking it's closer to Americson or if it's Americson or if it's, or did you say it said it on the back? It's it right, it's Oktoberfest or Americson. Okay. Okay. All right. Do we want to open one more? Um. Which one are you uh, curious about? I'm kind of curious about this one. Well, I don't know. Half Acre or? I, I, I really like Half Acre's Instagram feed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this theme because I like their. I mean, I, I kind of like this one because it's got pretzels on it. I do board. like this. I, like, I, I, was, I was leaning towards this one first because I feel like this this can keeps catching my eye. Like it's very, oh. that was so funny. Let's do it. I had no idea this was pretzels until you just said that. Oh. <laughs> I've, had, I've had this can sitting on my desk for like ever. <laughs> and I just saw it as like yellow design. Um, that's so cute. Pretty really cute. It's really, yeah. It is really fun to see the different can art. Um, do you guys remember when like all craft beer was in bottles? That like no one put craft beer in cans and everyone was like, no, no, no. Like that's like... We will do that. Yeah, it's it's so fun to see all the creativity and how they partner and collab with these like local resident artists to create their specialty like hands. It's really quite a big fun part of the beer culture now. I think that would have never existed. If we all yeah, see bottles. A lot harder to do it with bottles, I think, it's not just not yeah. to get a can, but yeah, for sure. I particularly like this one because of the way I like. I don't know for some reason I really like this one a lot. The half acre? That big graphic, you know, yeah. simple bomb. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like these two with the pretzel and the beer, and then this one, these are like, you're all set for your October. <laughs> you have your beers, you have your pretzels, you have your, you have your leader hose. All right, ready to go. Um, so this one is Fair State Co op. And this was only the third co op brewery in the country. Um, and they actually, it was a group of friends who played rugby together and had this idea that they wanted to like start a brewery. And they were in Austin, I believe, 
and they went to what was the name of the other written down somewhere here black star co-op in austin so black star co-op is a brewery out there in austin and they went there together and they were like oh interesting a co-op brewery um that really because they were home brewers already and they really felt like you know when you're home brewing you're in all the details and you understand the whole process and you're really like in it all but then when you work at a brewery there's so much that's like behind closed doors and like you're not you don't have access if you're not the person who does that and so they really felt like this idea of a co-op brewery would kind of like make working at a brewery a little bit more transparent and that everyone would be a part of it. And so they started the third, only the third in the country co-op brewery. Um, and they have 2000 members today. Um, That's really cool. And yeah, and so they're really very big about community and giving back to the community and having the community be really a part of their process. Mm -hmm. So again, well, the same style, I would say, as the Half Acre um, <clears throat> and the Smogtoberfest, this one has a pretty distinct mm. aromatic profile. But the departure once more. Yeah. yeah. I feel like this does have a little bit more of the, the bittering hops that are maybe non traditional. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, comparing these two. So it'll be interesting, Zach, when you get your um, Zip Scout kit, because the beers that you got in replacement, tend, are they all Meritons? I guess they are. Yeah, Meritons, Meritons, Meritons. I think they're all Meritons. This one is more of a fresh beer. Oh, we thought that one was going to be yeah. more of a Meritons. Um, but then these three are all fresh beers. So you'll get the other end of the spectrum with that. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a good point, yeah. Getting canning machines back then. Was expensive? Very expensive. And they didn't have like mobile canning and like the way they. Yeah. And I mean, anytime do. you're already doing something one way and then you want to do it a different way, that's an investment to kind of get started with that. And if you're familiar with, you know, bottling, that's something that you can very easily do at home with just a simple device to sure. put the crown cap on. Sure. All right. What is no girls? The Bavarian word for cheers, no, a kind of bratwurst. Well, now that just makes me hungry. <laughs> um, leftover beer. It is leftover beer. And so that is what it is called when you have just like a little bit of beer left in your glass. And apparently at Oktoberfest, it is a big no-no to pour the leftovers from this one in your new beer before you finish to not waste it. Big no-no. Like you're just supposed to discard that little bit of beer that's at the bottom. Why wouldn't you just finish it? Well, you can do that, I suppose, <laughs> but apparently they have a whole name for it because it's like, just dump that little bit out. Like, don't drink that. It's been in your cup too, it's last too long. It's probably a little warm. It's probably a little flat. Like, that's not what you want to do. Okay. So if you're seen kind of being greedy with your beer and like topping off your old one with your new one, they're just going to come a, over and be like, no, no, no. Finger wag, yeah. huh? Yeah. That's Interesting. Mm -hmm. I would think that that would be, there wouldn't be a word for it because the inappropriate thing to do is to leave leftover beer in your glass like how come you didn't finish that before you went and got another one but i get it like it's a leader so it's going to get warm it's going to get flat yeah unless you're really going after it right right <clears throat> yeah it's interesting that the sweetness of that one following that with this one is it's a little challenging to go into this more bitter realm and sweet i think in the other direction are you calling the Smogtoberfest the sweeter one? Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that, that kind of cashew butter, white chocolate mm -hmm. kind of component. This one is uh, like a lot more roasted instead of toasted. It's got also bit of, a little bit it more. It does bitterness. have that drying uh -huh. bitterness kind of in, in the middle of my tongue. Well, and that was the original order we were going to go in, which was going to be the second, but with people having different beers all of a sudden. We had to switch Audible. it up. We had to switch it up. <clears throat> All right, we have two poll questions left, and then everyone get ready. If you want to get on camera and hang out with us and talk to us, we're, we're doing that next. As long as you have your uh, the appropriate attire. <laughs> no, it's okay. Although, if you have that for the attire, I have brownie points for you. Um, one of the answers in the last one was the Bavarian style hat. But what is this actually I, feel, I can't remember. 
I feel like we knew last year. Mm. And I don't think I have a full question for that either. Um, look it up. This is a fun one. What does what is where do the giant cupids at Oktoberfest point forward? The first question is like, why are there cupids? <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, and I've seen pictures of this, they're like giant on top of like whole cupids, like kind of all over the place. Um, and so the exits, the crossbow shooting range, the first aid stations were above the bathroom. Oh. Your guess. What's your guess? I, I hope it's bathroom. It is. Hey, all right. It is the bathroom. <laughs> That's great. Which I know it is great, right? Like you could, we're trying to think like maybe the first aid stations or maybe the exits, you know. Mm -hmm. But like when you're drinking a lot of beer, you urgently need to be like. Of course, they have some kind of visual of like, how do I get to the closest right. bathroom? So because it's that that. we love the bathroom. And hence the cupid. Yeah. Okay. It's called a Tyrolean hat. Tyrolean hat. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And that makes sense because uh, Tyrol is the northern part of Italy that butts up against the southern part of like Germany, Austria. I'm not sure if there's, if there's a German border there or Austrian border there. Okay. And Bavaria is in the southern part of Germany, and they would be very close to Cool. It's a Tyrolean hat. Which we found not here on October 5th. Oh, the home country road is. Hmm. Yeah. I feel like 99 walks the room is getting like hopefully you hear that. Yeah. <laughs> um I'm kind of like, why would you hear the chicken dance wine is gay or taking home country road at October 5th? Because those are all like songs that, you know, a, a brass band can easily play. Mm. Sure. Well, if you've ever been to an Oktoberfest in America, the chicken dance is very prevalent. Very prevalent. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Oktoberfest and the chicken dance. But, if, if, well, maybe because they eat so many roast chicken. Yep. I mean, that's just, you know. Yep. But apparently in Germany, you are not going to hear the chicken dance at all. But apparently, you are going to hear taking home country roads a lot <laughs> from what it sounds like. <laughs> like. Like, they really like that song. And so they're playing that a lot. And they're also playing the YMCA. I think that you do a chicken dance there. Or there's like a chicken dance hat or something. Maybe not a chicken dance hat. Maybe there's a chicken, chicken hat. Like the feather. Like you see some of these hats. And they've got these, these feathers that are like, you know, they look like you're the... The marching guy in the front of the parade that big chicken <laughs> feather. Great. Great. I love it. Um, one more? Or are we done? A few. We can no, I'm saying the quiz. Oh no, the, the quiz is done. Um and before we have turn it over and let everyone who wants to turn their cameras on, I know we've had a few more people join us while we got started here. And so I just want to mention one more time for those of you who are interested in next month's Tip Scout kit, we have a very exciting American Single Malt kit next month, and it is epic. And yes, you're going to get some little tasting glasses along with it. And um, next month, our four, at least four of the distillers, still waiting to hear from a couple of them, are going to be joining us to talk all about American Single Malt and this amazing burgeoning category of whiskey that we are really, really excited about. There's the split, like some of these whiskeys. We have one from California, we have one from Minnesota, we have one from Washington. Yeah, yeah from Washington. Um, There's one from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm forgetting. Two from California. Actually. Colorado. Colorado, too. Yeah. I'm really forgetting. Oh, two from California, you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's going to be an exciting one next month, and we are very happy to have the distillers with us and hope that all of you will join because we don't get to get the makers on all that often. They're very busy making us solicit these. Um, so we're thrilled that they're going to be joining us and we hope you'll be here too. And we'll probably, we'll, um, you know, we'll let them talk for a little while, but we'll definitely let it open up so you guys can get on camera and ask your questions and do that and make sure we have enough time to do that um, like we like we typically do. So get your questions ready about what you want to learn about American single malt and what you want to, you know, do there. Otherwise, I'm going to hog their entire attention. We have lots of questions. Actually, one of the American single malts that we discovered um, to add to the kit 
was at the distillers conference. So we were at the distillers conference right. and someone who actually uh, embarrassingly like recognized me from from Instagram and social media and was like, oh, we follow you, you know, so she came up to us and was talking to us and I mentioned that we were doing an American single malt case. She was like, oh my God, we just launched one and I have it in my pot, in my purse. Do you want to taste it? And so we tasted it and Evan, and Evan tasted it and he actually said to me when he tasted it, he's like, I feel like that might be my favorite single malt I've tasted in like all the American single malt I've tasted mm-hmm. so far and they had just launched it um, and they're a pretty new distillery as well. So it's really exciting to be able to support them and get that out there to you guys so you can you can check it out too. Yeah, that was called Getty Wave. Yeah. From Top Moon Bay. Yeah. That's very exciting. Um all right. I'm going to press the button to Grand Marshall, thank you. Oh yes. Grand Marshall. Dun, dun, dun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. All right, so you'll get a little notification pop up on your screen if you would like to be promoted to panelists so you can turn your camera and video on. If you don't want to, that's okay. You can stay completely hidden and keep just chatting with us. Um, and for those of you, if you do need to leave, we totally understand. It's a Thursday night and gosh, we have a lot of beer in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but if you do have to leave and you can't stick around, thank you so much for joining us for Oktoberfest. Yeah. We really enjoyed having you here, and we hope you enjoy these beers and these delicious pretzels. Reminder for all of you, if you like these beers or if you like beer at all, shoot me an email. I have $25 gift cards for Craft Shop, and Craft Shop is really amazing because you can build your own 6, 12, 18, 24 packs, so you can budget by singles of everything and just compile your own and it's mostly craft out craft beer they have spirits as well um and so i have tons of promo codes for 25 dollars off um i think 30 dollars or more 50 dollars i don't know but it basically equates to free shipping so you can get a 12 pack and get free shipping on it so it's basically like you're buying it at the store um so shoot me an email whenever you want because i have so many of these promo codes um, and just say, hey, can I get one of those promo codes to get some beer? And I'll send one for you. You can use it for people for Christmas gifts. You can use it, you know, it's a nice way to try craft beers and get more of these, especially. And if you like these, if you want to get more of these, make sure to go do that quickly. No, October has beers sell out fast. And so some of these, they might not even have. I think these three, I believe they don't have anymore. So it's going to be back yeah, in the category. They might be getting more of them in because it is still the season, but. But they only, you know, they only make them once a year yeah and so once they're done with what they made that year you, you start away from extra uh and usually they're released in august so by the time you know october actually hits uh they're released in august but they're really hard to find until about mid-september you know just, like they like at the brewery you can find them in august yeah. but in stores and so and that's also why we love doing oktoberfest every year we don't do many repeat events in zip scout but we do oktoberfest every year because it's fun to get to try these from breweries all over the country when they're a limited time kind of release. Every time um, a new one, you know, year and over the year, canner. different batches yeah. are, are different. For sure. All you right. You like them as much as we do. <laughs> all right. So some of you probably got the promote the panelist thing. If you missed it and I already sent it over to you and you want me to send it again so you can turn it on, just let me know. Otherwise, for those of you who had to leave, thank you again for joining. We really appreciate you. Cheers. Cheers. <clears throat> we need some uh, traditional like German folk music now. We do. Maybe. Hi there. Hey. Hey, good to see you. I think you're muted. Oh, there you go. You're. Oh, Jay left and said he'll be right back. All right, we'll keep an eye out for him. Where's the? Can I hear you? Hold on. Making some adjustments. No, I don't think I can hear you guys. No, hello? It's not connected to anything. Oh, background and effects. My volume's up. My Bluetooth. Hello? Bueller. Maybe. Are you raising your hand with me? I didn't. I didn't try to. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. Mm. What is it? Is it me? Oh, wait. Hold on. We figured it out. I think it's us. Uh, mm-hmm. How about now? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> hey, there we go.
Glad I did. Technology. <laughs> they're, they're like, what the heck? I'm doing everything right over here. How you guys doing? Oh, we're doing good. Yeah? Do you, do you enjoy your beers? Yes. Yes, we really liked the the smog city quite a bit. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Wait, do you know what's in, what's in our glasses now? No, no, can do This it. is the best beer from Occidental. This is this best beer, and then the half acre is in here. What are these two? Um, this is my <laughs> smart sober fest. <laughs> so if you want to look at the colors here, what do I have in front of me? What's that one? Yeah, I like the Smog Sober Fest a lot too. I really like this half acre. So if you guys get this one, I'll be curious to hear what you guys say. I like this one a lot. This is Smog Sober Fest. I wonder if I like this one so much. I wonder if there's a, um, what's it called? A subconscious thing because I'm drinking it out of like a half liter thing versus this, but it's kind of like, right? I would say that there is no chance there's a, that no religion. That just means you got to drink them all out of the. Yeah. We need, we need another couple of these nice steins. Mm -hmm. There you go. I actually have one of those, like the big boy steins that I, <laughs> when I was in my twenties, I stole out of a bar in like this teeny tiny purse. <laughs> I like my friend and I were in the bar and I was like handing, I was emptying out my purse under the table to her. And I just shoved the stein in and just, <laughs> I was really just stealing her glasses for a little bit. I had one of the full like leader size ones, uh, years and years ago that a friend of mine made for our group of friends and was nice. not the glass but like he, he got oh. the glass. i was like whoa <laughs> that would be really cool um they were you know traditional ones but he's an artist and so he got them and like painted with like a whatever non-toxic kind of like acrylic paint that could go through the dishwasher um you know, different like imagery on each one that pertain to that particular person, like things that they liked or were known for, nicknames, stuff like that, uh, and gave them all to us one year for Oktoberfest. Um, and tragically, it broke mm. five, oh. 10 years ago. But I you have fond memories of that. Corbin still has his. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's fun. Yeah, Evan's friend, Zach. Um, who actually usually joins us for Oktoberfest and is our our beer beer cicerone. He's a beer judge, makes his own beer. Hey, nice. It's, yeah. He makes some of the best beer I've ever tasted, honestly. Really like good. like yeah. even compared to like maybe next year. Because he always makes an Oktoberfest beer. Maybe we can get him to make it to include it. Oh, yeah. Wow, well, we'll that'd be fun. That would be um, really cool. But he has an Oktoberfest party every year too, and I miss it every year. I'm never here for some reason, but they all do the thing in two weeks. Two weeks or something? Yeah. So, yeah and he'll have his Oktoberfest beer there, which is great. Yeah. Tom, Tom had two different Oktoberfest beers. Yeah. Tom, oh, cool. Crunktoberfest. <laughs> great name. Yeah. Crunktoberfest, Bobtoberfest, Mobtoberfest, Oktoberfest. <laughs> Just throw you out of your one from Oktoberfest. Making those German. <laughs> yeah, they're cringe. They're cringe. Oh, God. That's the funniest thing is like, I've been over there only for a very short amount of time, went there for a conference, but I was in Cologne and it was like, okay, where are the beers? And they're like, this is our beer, the Kolsch. And you're like, okay, cool. But like, What's the, what, where are the other ones? Where are the other ones? They're like, go to another city. I'm like, huh. <laughs> no, literally, Kolsch is for Cologne, for Cologne. You want a different beer? You go to a different city. Those are the rules here. It's like, what? That's wild. Yeah. And that then, really is something else. Did you go to stores at all? Are the stores, they only have like that too? Or do the stores at least get? I was there yeah, for sure. a conference. And funny thing was like, it was a, a student business conference, like a business student sort of thing. And they would like freaking ply us with Rice Dwarf every night. Like, they would have music going till 2 a.m. if you wanted to be there and unlimited beer in the bottle. Just like, ah, oh, here you go. Uh, you know, it's whatever. It's a beer. No one cares. You know, don't. Yeah. And uh, so, no, I never really got into the stores. I So I don't know. Maybe you could get them in the stores there. But at least yeah. in like, went to a couple I mean, restaurants. You can get free beer until 2 in the morning. Yeah, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think Tom's got some experience here 
uh-huh. Yeah. And that okay. makes sense because the local beers are on draft and the bar is serving draft beer. Like, I feel like that's probably less common to see bottled beer in bars. Yeah. Public rooms are usually just what comes up. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, you also had a comment earlier in the the night where you said something about like, oh, you're talking about the different East strains and that sort of thing. Um, your your beer friend uh, might be interested in doing something like this, where the the beer club um, back in my hometown in East Tennessee, they would do this thing every year, um, where the guy who had the biggest brewing kit, I think he had like a half bar- barrel setup or something like that, would brew um i think 15 gallons 10 gallons something like that and then they would divide it up five six seven people the wart the finished wart pass it off to a bunch of different people and each person would use a different strain of yeast Mm. and they'd all get back together and you know a month or so after it brewed uh, and try the differences and it's really incredible it's just like the, the malt's the same, the uh, water, everything else is the same. Admittedly, different fermenting conditions, but they all try sure. to keep similar as possible. But sure. it, it's a fun experiment if you want That's to try really it. That's cool. Man, the market researcher in me, I, when my, back in my corporate days, I was a market researcher for a long time. And that's like a fascinating market research study, you know, where it's like keep all the variables the same and then change this one and then do it again, but just change this one. And like, I love that kind of stuff. That's so fun. Yeah, well, that's a really neat idea. Isolate what difference. So, like when I read that email from the brewer, it's like, well, how much difference does yeast make? How much difference does the malt make? And like, you don't really know that unless you do that kind of like single focus mm-hmm. experimentation. You know, that's why I love when they do that with wine sometimes too, where like um, there's that place that would have the exact same wine, the same vineyard source, the same year, the same, you know, process, but then they would put one in like French oak and one in American oak. Oh. And then you would get to like try them side by side. And it's just like, oh, like, you know, like we all know there's French oak, American oak, and this oak. And like, but it's so fascinating to be able to, and they, they did a bunch of little like side by side variables like that. Yeah. Um, it was, it's not one of your favorite wineries. I know that, but they do cool stuff like that. But <laughs> kind of. There it is. Del, Tom knows it. <laughs> it is Del Dotto. It is Del Dotto. <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't saying it because we, those of us in the industry, we often refer to it as Del Blotto, um, because they they really like they, they they have very big pores. They have very big and like the people there. Yeah, they you're, really you're tasting out more. of the barrels. Yeah. Um, Tom, I'm guessing that you've been there because I don't feel like they yeah sell their wine in stores. Um, and I guess it's more about the customers that go there than the winery, because the people who go there often go there later in the day, and because they're open later too. Yeah, I mean, they're open a little bit later. Yeah. Um, when we would go there, we would always go there at the end of the day simply because our guests weren't capable of going to another winery after they left El Dado Yeah. Because of the amount of wine that they stated to they, they for and, and for. consume. Which is really awesome if you're there and you're, you know, when you're like, I get to try all these experiments and try all these things, but it is, you know, you, you have to be, drink a lot. You have to be very... Uh, self-controlled to not actually consume everything and since you're not yeah. tasting at a you know at a table they, most of the time where there's a place to dump out what you don't want to finish because they bring you walking the around in the cave like, and so you're all. finishing everything and you don't really know how much you're drinking because it's just like a little little dose of this one because it's all from the barrel and it's super cool but yeah they they definitely had a reputation among the other wineries in napa valley um Basically, the joke was that they didn't charge your credit card until the next day because they got so many chargebacks from people that woke up the next morning and were like, I just bought three cases of wine that cost me $8,000. No, 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 no. (laughs) Oh, gosh. But their wines, their wines are their good. Wines are, their yeah. wines are very good. Yeah. Um, but that was that was an interesting reputation. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I also think like if you know what you're doing and you're in a cave, you're very comfortable sitting on the ground, and you know that that's okay. Or, or like, you know, there's out. there's the drain. Right. I mean, exactly. The drain's right there, and like so. But a lot of people who like are just like visiting and not 
come like they're just like oh i guess i better drink all this and they like feel like they have to drink it all you know um yeah. so the name might ring a bell and maybe tom since you've been there you you know the the namesake Dave Delgado um, used to be seen on late night television in between shows, commercials, how to make money buying and selling real estate with me, Dave Delgado. And he really? was wearing a blazer that had dollar symbols on it. It was a bright green blazer. Oh with dollar. Do you remember these no, commercials? No, I don't. How to make money sell it, buying and selling real estate with Dave Delgado. And he made a lot more money selling those manuals than he ever did buying and selling real estate. Well, uh, whatever he did, he did right. He, he did. They have what? Cheap rewineries now? Yeah, they, they have that location. Then there's the original one in Atlas Peak or down uh, by the road up to Atlas Peak. Um, but yeah. I've only been to the, I've only been to the original one, the stone kind of one. Uh-huh. Next to Whetstone. Yeah, and I really like that one. Yeah, on Whetstone Street as well. Yeah, so funny. But I, I love those market research experiments, though. I think that's the best way to learn. I, and I imagine, like, if you're a brewer or you're a winemaker, you almost have to kind of do those things to learn what the influence of all the elements are. Um, oh, I think wait. is my favorite. It's really good. I like that one a lot. Oktoberfest is a close second, though, I think. Hey, will you promote me? Yeah, because I want to... I want to... <laughs> I want to share this picture of Dave Delgado. Oh. <laughs> Excited to see this. Wait, wait I, you got to find one. And find the right one. Where he's got his, his money making jacket. That's not Dave Delgado. That's Jay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Am I promoted? Yeah. I want to go to Germany though. I haven't, I haven't been to Eastern Europe at all. I've only been to Western Europe. Yeah, I think that going to Munich would be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm game. I want to tell you. Aww. Tom, I'm sorry your camera won't turn on. Aww. Wait, are you sure? <laughs> Let's try again. Double check. Uh -huh. uh. I hate that. I used to have a dirndl, but it broke. You were just wearing it too much, huh? You just well, I in our town of Knoxville, I helped open a German brewery. Um, oh. But we wore, and it was cheap off of eBay, so it it. Pieces. Yeah. She says German. She she really does mean literally German. Like the guy. The owners were from somewhere in Germany. Somewhere in Germany. And his oh. parents were coming, like came over too, and they yes. spoke not a whole lot of English. Oh wow! It was yeah. They were. That's you know, cool. Yeah, actually, one of the I think the Urban Chestnut Brewery is from Germany as well. This is kind of interesting. Oh, oh wait, yeah. commercial? Yeah. All right, here we go, everyone. You ready? From the beautiful Outrigger Waikiki Beach Hotel in Honolulu, Hawaii, we oh, invite you to join John Davidson and his special guest, self-made oh, this looks like an actual poem. Dave Delgado and new wealth builders from across the nation as we present financial freedom and all right that's, that's probably enough of that but <laughs> that's not what you were looking for it's not quite the one i was looking for oh, Jose, that looks great oh nice that's wonderful Perfect. all right yeah <laughs> oh yours looks pretty authentico yeah that does look nice that looks like my dad. Yeah, it looks like kind of like a like almost like leatherish. True leather. Bit. Well, that's 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 a, the the translation technically. Yeah, it's, it's real it's leather. Nice. It's it's very very warm for Dallas this time of year. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> we're, we're a little warm in Arizona as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for dressing up. That's great. Um, yeah, Evan had. I'm surprised you actually because you often wear your your dad. But I guess not for on the show. Like this is your cheaper one. But he has his father is from Germany. Is it looks very similar to yeah. that actually. 
Um, well, the last time I wore it, uh, the uh, the fender disconnected. Uh, yeah, I have to I have to patch that, stick that back together. You better do that before your big October yeah. party. The buttons are like actual deer horn. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. So my buttons, my buttons, uh, the actual button loop kind of like rips through where uh, you actually attach uh -huh. it. So I have to figure out a way to reattach it. That's, That's great. I love it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess at least this Dave Delgado is telling everyone how to make nothing but money, and like clearly he has it figured out. He has three lines. That's one there. of the names of his book. How to, how make, to make nothing, nothing but, but money. money. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should all follow his lead. I mean, yeah. His wineries are pretty enough that maybe uh maybe he's onto something. I think it's interesting that that's like kind of come there's like a thing among people who come into money. It's like, oh yes, let's get into alcohol or spirits. Like you're kind of seeing that with celebrities now where they're all, I'm sure these were like fully formed companies beforehand sort of like, or is this is more enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like a marketing play than anything, but it's like, oh yeah. Aviator gin and what Ryan Reynolds and. Aviation. Yeah. yeah. What was the recent one that we were uh, last excited bummed about? The B2B. Oh, oh B2B. Um, brown sugar bourbon is incredible, and Jamie Fox is now involved in it. That's right. But he didn't buy. He didn't buy it. He's like an investor in it, and it sounds. It sounds like That's he's true. Kind of like hands on and really like trying to help support the brand so far. But I can kind of see it to an extent with famous celebrity types that are famous for their art because. It is, you know, depending on your level of involvement, there is an art form uh, that that goes into distillation or fermentation. Um, I feel like Francis Ford Coppola is a good example. Of yeah, that. has done a very good job of like recognizing the virtues and putting the right people in the front seat of the wine making, but still wanting to be involved and part of it. Uh, because it's a passion, you know, yeah. it's another version, another expression of their artistic side. Um, but the one that the, you know, the celebrities that are just like, like if the Kardashians bought a brand. Oh, they did. Ken Kendall Jenner owns Tequila yeah. 818. Steve, you gotta, gotta, gotta keep up with the Kardashians. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Boy, I freaking put that on a t-ball stick for you, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, admit, I'll admit it is one of my guilty pleasures when Evan's not home. It is. Thank That's, you for just having it be a guilty pleasure when I'm not home. Yeah, no, I know because well, because you otherwise you make so much fun of me. It's not even enjoyable anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're what? <laughs> we never. <laughs> How do you watch that crap? Uh, they're very inspiring, I have to say. <laughs> Jay, what do you think of those pretzels? Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm eating a bagel because we didn't oh, get you're eating a bagel. Wait till you get your pretzel. You agree? I love my pretzel. <laughs> Aren't they so good? Uh, I kind of I I tapped into the case before our session today because I I wanted to have one of those pretzels and because I was going to eat one of those pretzels, I said to myself, might as well have one of the beers. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you're going to have a pretzel, you have to have a beer with it. Yeah. Yeah. Last year we only gave everyone two pretzels, and this year we realized how good they were, and we're like, now they need a pretzel for beer. Yep. Like this is. Let's not be. Oh. Kidding. <laughs> Great touch. Great touch. Yeah. yeah. They're from um, Amish country, right? No. Right. Yeah. No. Pennsylvania Dutch. Pennsylvania Dutch country. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess Quakers are the more prominent yeah. Yeah. religion in. My popcorn is from Amish country. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of Amish in, in Pennsylvania in general. Dutch. Just it's more. I think it's more in the. Western part. Yeah, but I think I think this family's been making these hard pretzels since like the early 1900s or something. Like it's a German family and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hammond? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hammond. And if you like you, know, you were talking about, you know, going out to uh Germany to do Oktoberfest. So I was looking around here in Washington State, and there is a German village in Leavenworth, a Bavarian village, 
And uh, while you were talking, I looked it up and uh, their Oktoberfest is in, I think, two weeks. And so who knows? Maybe I'll go go do a little Burberry. Yeah, slope it out. You should. Yeah. And then like they, they, have, they have it all decked out and stuff. And that's sort of like part of the tourism of this town cool. out here. Cool. Yeah. I bet it's also very pretty at Christmas time. Yeah. I, bet oh. they, I, I bet they do it up for Christmas too. Yeah. yeah. Does um, I guess you're not particularly close to Hill Country, Tom. But does Fredericksburg do? Because that's kind of like a Bavarian theme type place, right? Yes. Uh, and Fredericks actually, in Dallas, a lot of the local areas have their own Oktoberfest that are all going on right now. Okay. Okay. So the town I live in is Garland. It's one of the Dallas suburbs. And we have what we call the Garland Guzzler, which will be on Saturday. It's a 0.5K race around the square. <laughs> and you stop for donuts halfway. And, and then you get a, a a pint of beer at the end and you guzzle it at the end. So it's a lot of fun. This is your kind of race. <laughs> That's what the turkey trot was. When I did a turkey trot. It was just like, I mean, you can... It's right. It's the morning of Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, you know, there's obviously a drinking theme, and they don't even call it a race, they call it a trot. Right. right. Yeah. That's great. Same, same. That's great. Uh, I feel like Clarkdale here normally does a little Oktoberfest thing, but. Yeah, that's true. No, it's not that there. Nothing, nothing to write home about. The biggest one in the United States is in Cincinnati. Hmm. Oktoberfest Zinzinati is what they refer to it as. Like Why? 70,000 people? Why do they call it Oktoberfest Zinzinati? I don't know. That sounds like a Zin festival. Sounds That's like they, true. It sounds like they should be serving as infidels. <laughs> Getting the wrong idea. Yeah. And then I think the biggest one outside of Munich is not even in Germany. It's in uh, in Canada. Um, I think in Edmonton? Huh. No, that's probably too cold. Does Cincinnati have a lot of German population? I mean, I think Ohio and like Pennsylvania. Uh, Pennsylvania have a lot of Germans, yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Interesting. Michigan. Yeah, like that north, like northern, western, or northern, eastern. Yeah. Americans are also really good at co-opting other holidays. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Of course. of course. Ding, 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 ding. I was just <laughs> the largest one in the country. I would hope there's also a decent Eastern. German population. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think I have that recollection. It's like Miami, the biggest Oktoberfest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting. We have we have medieval a big medieval festival here. That's what Phoenix is mm -hmm. known for. Yeah, the big medieval yeah. festival, massive Renaissance fair. I don't know why that is in Phoenix, Arizona. Like, yeah, there's a lot of Renaissance stuff happening here. And <laughs> that sounds lots of fun and full. You know iron steel you know plate armor running yeah. around or yeah, leather you know yeah. leather gherkins and gauntlets and well y'all yeah. have the original london bridge right we do it was oh, deconstructed and yeah. moved all the way to uh yeah it's kind of on the way it's kind of on the way to uh new mexico um uh hmm. but I can. We haven't driven by it though. Um, we? we have not. Uh -huh. No. Huh. Um, Interesting. It's, I can't remember the lake that it sits across. I must, it's, why is it here? a lake? It's a reservoir. I don't know because they're weird. They're like, <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. You guys don't want it anymore. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Does it look like the current London Bridge? No. Oh, not like. I different. mean, kind of, but the scale That's is. Cool. Yeah. Huh. Um. New tourist attraction for me to go check out. Apparently, it's a it's a hefty drive, and once you get there and you see it, you're like, "All right, now I have to drive back." <laughs> <laughs> I guess it'd have to be on the way to something. Which is the problem is that it's not really on the way to anything. That yeah, we'll see. Maybe there's something we can figure out that's kind of on the way. Definitely sounds like a solution in search of a problem, like. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's on Lake Havasu. Okay, that makes sense. Oh. Havasu, that's right. That's the lake. We were just on a houseboat for a week on Lake um Lake Powell. Oh yeah. Okay. So cool. well, not really, because it doesn't have the towers. No, it doesn't have the towers. So it's not it's not really that impressive. I don't I don't need to go see that. Right. 
Thank we'll you. be in Flagstaff and Sedona and the Grand Canyon in a couple of weeks. Oh, no kidding. Oh, you will be. Very cool. Let us know when you're here if you want to go get a drink somewhere. Yeah, we're we're at twenty minutes from Sedona. Yeah, I've been working in Sedona at, uh, at a restaurant sometimes. Oh, okay. We, we may do that. Yeah, yeah, we can we can go get a drink somewhere. There's some. Um, don't go to Oak Creek Brewery. Okay. <laughs> sorry, 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 Oak Creek Brewery. All the other, all the other breweries in the area, I feel like, are are worth your time and effort. Yeah, so that one I'm just like. Sedona Beer Co is good. No. Um, smells are kind of good. Down up here is great. Uh, Mother Road in Flagstaff is good. Uh -huh. Dark Sky in Flagstaff great. is good. Yeah. What's the sister one of Oak Creek that's also in Flagstaff? Oh, I didn't know that sister one. Oh, oh, that one's not all that great either. Right? Lumber Yard. Lumber Yard. Yeah, oh, they're bas it's basically the same beers with different names on them. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was sister of brewery. Yeah, yeah, same ownership. You can skip. There's it. a great distillery here. Well, there's a good distillery. Well, here. wait. Do we feel like their spirits are great? I'm trying to remember. The view from this distillery yeah. and the and the, Red um, Wall. the ambiance of the distillery is totally worth checking out. It's called Red Wall Distillery. And they have just like this sitting area and there's just like red rocks all right there. And you can taste through their spirits and get a cocktail. And like, it's really. It's quite striking. And it certainly um, does a good service. The spirits, to, the spirits were good. To the spirits. Yeah, they are, they are good. Um, I don't feel like any of them followed like, me. Uh, yeah, I feel the same way. But. We were happy with all of them, but none of them. We didn't like, have a cocktail though. So I'm not sure about their cocktails, but I bet their cocktails are good. Mm -hmm. But the it's a local eye doctor who apparently is very wealthy because he like he just built up this beautiful distillery. And then I saw on Instagram the other day last weekend for football, it was just like, come to Redwall Distillery. The owner's buying Mexican for everyone until it runs out. And I was just like, <laughs> what? Like you're gonna give them free food? Like all like it's what? not even <laughs> Tuesday and there's tacos for everyone. Yeah, so. <laughs> So it's yeah, it's a it, it feels a little shishi, but it's pretty pretty nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys are gonna have a great time. This what? is a really perfect time of the year to to come visit. What are you guys coming out here for? Just vacation fun? Um. So we got on the lottery to go into Havasu Falls, oh, wow. right now, like four years ago, and then the the pandemic. So we kept getting rescheduled and rescheduled. So we finally get to go. Wow, that's great. That's gonna be a fun trip. Yeah. I haven't done that yet. I, I want to do that. It's I, We've I mean, done it before. It's really cool. I feel like it's one of those things that like once you once you've been there you're like, "Oh, this is a place that I want to come back to." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and we've hiked it from the, the canyon yeah. side before, you know, when we did a rafting trip, but hiking it from the top is totally different. Yeah, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a descent that yeah. You're, you're familiar. Yeah, the first mile and a half is just zigzagging down the cliff face, but then it's like six miles in to, of just nothing. Yeah. But then at the falls, yeah, you've got to climb down ladders and ropes and stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's what a story they were telling me where some girl got like frozen on it and wouldn't move up or down and like no one could. No one her. could do anything. Yep. Oh, you got to just throw rocks at her and make her go. I don't. <laughs> it sounds like they were. It That's sounds actually like they were. The, the point that they got to, like after like 20 minutes. And she was just like, just like frozen in fear and refusing, and like no one could do anything. And they were all just like, oh, what do we do? We have friends who were guides for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never done either. I was going to go in like the mid 2000s, late 2000s, and there was a flash flood that like destroyed all the travertine things. And so yeah. I like, oh, no, I don't want to go. The last uh, time we went, they, they had rain, that, and so right? it was all brown instead of the 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 blue color. Yeah, right. I understand that they've uh, like not. I mean, not fully artificially, but they did stuff to like allow the pools to rebuild. Like maybe like, did they put like chicken wire down so that the calcification could kind of build up on it? I'm not quite sure. I I know that they that. did work after those big floods. So I, I'll guess I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, please report back. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, we should do that in the spring. Well, we don't have to get on a, like a... Yeah, yeah. You get, like you've got to bid for a lottery spot like a year in advance. It's yeah. the same as getting river like rafting permit, permit. But the thing is, is that the, it's a lot easier for us to get a cancellation last minute. Because we're here. Oh, because you're right there. Yeah. As opposed yeah. to a cancellation on a river, yeah. you have to have like have all that crap ready to go. Yeah. 
That makes sense. <clears throat> So wait, Tom, do, do I understand that you uh, you got to raft down the Grand Canyon? You got to yes. see it from, from the riverside? After yeah, that? so we did it all the way from Lake Mead to Lake Powell, or Lake Powell to Lake Mead, whatever, yeah. all the way down, yeah. Wow, that's fun. That's, uh, yeah, that's one of the more memorable experiences of, of my life uh, was, was doing that. That's cool. You've done it twice. twice. Yeah. My parents were like rafters before I was born. And so oh, okay. I, I grew up in a family with like all my parents' friends are raft, raft buddies. <laughs> and his parents were teachers. So all summer long, they didn't have to work. And so they would just like raft all summer and camp all summer and be outdoorsy fun all summer. Play play in the outdoors. Sounds like a pretty great way to grow up. Yeah. Although, although according to Evan's parents, he would refuse to take his nose out of a book and be like, whatever, I don't want to look out the window. I'm reading my Hardy Boys. <laughs> There's a lot to that. I'm, a, you know, reading a book out. My idea of fishing is sitting next to water and reading a book, right? <laughs> teach a man to fish. Or wait, yeah. give a man a fish. He eats for a day. Teach a man to fish. He sits in a boat and drinks beer all day. <laughs> That's good. Like you that. know, speaking of um, things from foreign lands and res resurrected in. America. Mm -hmm. I went to Detroit not too long ago and I went to the Ford Museum. Mm. And Ford had a obsession with Edison. And oh. so Ford took all these workshops that Edison had in England and had them recreated brick by brick in a playland outside the Ford factory. Wait, and, what did yeah. you create? The workshops of Edison from England. Yeah. Oh. And so Ford, you know how, um, you know, our dads or something, they may have a little train set. Well, Ford had built himself a village with actual buildings of importance. And he had them shipped over from Europe. And so on the Ford campus, there's a little village called like Green Village or something like that. And you can take a, a train, an actual train, around the village and see all these famous huts and houses and places of note. It's amazing. That sounds really cool. Wow. Yeah. Wait, and you went there? And, and so you get to see a billionaire's train set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's and so cool. if you ever find yourself in the Detroit area, you wow. have to go to the Ford Museum and you get there early and, and there's the museum part, which is in a enclosed space. And then you have the village of houses of note. And it's just amazing to see what he spent money on. And like way back in the day, uh, he was a very, very wealthy man. And he built this, this like compound of houses that were colonial to I think rival White House, the White House in Washington, DC. And so imagine everything that you've ever seen in Washington, D.C., but a guy with a lot more money, making them more grand. Well, and then a train going all between them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so he had, he had his village, and then in the museum, he has all of his toys. And he, ha he collected the, the strangest kind of adjacent thing, and he, he, um, he collected steam engine machines and one of the most fascinating machines that he had collected was a gothic themed steam machine yeah like literally steampunk um it, it, was, <laughs> steam, no, it was goth punk goth because punk. It, but it was a steam engine so goth steampunk <laughs> yeah 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 and so cool. it, it was great to see an, uh, what an eccentric billionaire had done cool that sounds awesome. Yeah. Speaking of over the top ridiculous things, we went to a rum distillery oh. in Las Vegas um, when we were at this conference. And it happened to also be our anniversary. We splurged a little and did this whole thing. There's this rum distillery there that they used to be in LA. They moved over to Las Vegas. And basically, the whole troupe of Zumanity, which is one of the Cirque du Soleil shows, Zumanity closed and this rum distiller, this owner of this rum distillery was like, 
I'll hire the whole cast of humanity. The show closed, bring them over here. And he's created this distillery experience. So it's in it's in this area called Area 50, Area 15 um, in Vegas. And if you're familiar with what Meow Wolf is, if you've heard of Meow Wolf, there's one in Santa Fe, one in Vegas. But it's basically all these like football field size warehouses, essentially, that each one is like an experiential something or other. And so this one is a rum distillery and he's themed it as 20,000 leagues under the sea. And he brought in this incredible chef and so they do this like 16 course pairing menu with rum tastings and rum cocktails and rum cooked into the food. rum cooked into the food. Like they literally say on their menu, like we cannot make the food non-alcoholic. We're sorry. Like, so if you're not great, like don't also, come here you need to get not, a taxi. Yeah. Yeah. And don't drive here. You can get a taxi. Last yeah. Time. It was incredible. And like each, so the, the, the menu, the four courses or the 16 courses were divided into four parts. And each one was uh, in reference to a certain part of the novel. Yeah. So there was like a few days ashore and like through the like underwater like titans. Uh. But when you when you get there, you like check in and they bring you into like the waiting room and you walk in and it feels like you're in the submarine, but like like a Titanic decor kind of submarine. Like, you know, it's like decorated with like couches. But also and steampunk. And steampunk, right. which is what made me think of it. Right. Um, and but for the novelist. But when you go down there, all the chandeliers that are hanging are just like slightly right. swaying. And so you like feel like you're underwater. And then there's like these mechanical like kind of fish that are going outside like the windows kind of. The portholes. Like the portholes. <laughs> and so you sit there and they bring you a little rum cocktail while you're sitting there and you're just like, what is going on? And it was, the food was incredible. It was the, the most. The, the rum is good. Um, the rum, they're using an accelerated aging technique to make the rum. And while, like, I feel like accelerated aging techniques are really getting a lot better than they used to be. And so, but there, I, I feel like you could still tell, like, there's a little bit of, like, is a little, a little weird, off. Little yeah. off. But it was still delicious. And the, the cocktails were really great. And the cock, and like, but every time they bring out another course and the courses were like a bite or three, you know, it's 16 courses. Um, but the service staff, they would, it was almost like, it felt like a little eyes wide shutty to me, like where like the service staff would all, there was like one person for two guests and they, and it was a communal table. So it's 16 people at a communal table and the service staff all comes out in unison, like marching out with their dishes and they pause and stop behind the people and they wait until everyone's in their position and someone not, and then they place it down in front of you and then they wait and it, like it's orchestrated and like theatrical and there's a different song with every course. So like the, the song is part of like- the, the song would start before they started walking in with the dishes and yeah, very formal despite the fact that it was very non-standard. Uh, like there wasn't silverware. For so anything. the presentation of the dishes being very formal by like the choreographed delivery, yeah. but then uh, what do I eat this with? And like there would be some weird thing like, yeah. And then, you know, one of the cocktails is in this, like, garish, like, carrot tropical cocktail thing with, like, a whole half pineapple sticking out of it. Like, it was really cool. Then when you're done with dinner, you get to walk around the rest of the space, and he has all these humanity performers in there doing, like, a dance show. For left, or, like, for left like over acrobatics here. And and you get to go find different rum tastings throughout this experience and get more rum tastings and, like, watch these, like, up-close personal Cirque du Soleil like shows. Highly like, recommended, y'all. Crazy. It's way weird, but it was way cool. It was crazy. I mean, you're there for like four hours. Like it was crazy. It was a really, yeah. Lost spirits is what it's called. Lost spirits. Should we tell them about the weirdest dish? Oh yeah. So one, we're just gonna talk about one of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this. So this dish, in this particular instance, was caviar. Sometimes it's uh, sea urchin, uni, um, but the the crazy part is simply how it's served, and it is served on a plate that is made from the mold of the chef's mouth. So the <laughs> chef made a face like this, and then they made a mold of her face, and then they made the mold into a plate and then they put the caviar on it and she said 
All right, so pick up the plate and turn your head to the to the right because that's what I like, and then make out with me. <laughs> and you just like lick all the caviar out from between her teeth and between her lips and her off her tongue. Yeah, it was wild. Taking sensual maybe a little too far. <laughs> yeah, and was... the idea that you knew it was her mouth, and she said, "And turn your head to the right because that's what I like." Like yeah. it's not just a mouth in a plate with the tongue sticking out that they serve it on. It's her mouth. Yeah, pretty freaky. Are you pulling up the picture? Yeah, because <laughs> that that one. No, it's a little. It's. <laughs> uh... So like that's the plate after I ate off of it. But so like all the caviar is just like around the tongue and in the mouth, and you're just like licking all around it, trying to get the caviar out. Like it's kind of it's it's pretty ridiculous. You have one of it with the food on it. I don't know if I do. All right. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. And then they brought a whole pig's head out, and she like butchered the pig's head right there. And then like, but then there's another chef like kind of. You know, making these with time, chopsticks with, like, and chop tweezers, making it look making pretty. it look beautiful, and then bringing like one little bite to you off of this giant pig's head. Like it was, yeah, it was pretty insane. Highly recommend for like an ex it's like a dinner and a show kind of experience all in one. Yeah, you for, can like, skip the money for Cirque du Soleil tickets and just do this. Well, it's like because they're like up close and personal. Like right. the stage is right here, and they're like the foot's coming in front of your feet, and you're just like, whoa! Like it's it was really cool. Yep. Suzanne got scared because she thought that there was going to be an actual live snake on the dance floor. They made you, they wanted you to think that. They did. I'm not the only one who fell for that. I mean, you're the only one that moved behind me. <laughs> I don't need no snakes around me. <laughs> Evan's always I trying, got you. Evan's always trying to teach me about the snakes in Arizona because he's like, if you ever get bit by a snake, you need to know what kind of snake bit. And I'm just like, all snakes are bad. Like I just like no snakes. Like, but some are worse. It's very than helpful to know at least be able to guess confidently that it was or was not venomous because, like, I'm ever going to remember that in a moment of panic. Like, I'm just going to have to remember what the snake looks like and be able to explain it to someone. Right, you know? and that's what I'm saying is that like be able to look at it and look at the part of it that is going to indicate probably venomous. I'll take a picture. Please do. As like biting me. <laughs> no, like if you get bit, do your like with anything. If you get yeah. bit by a snake, a spider, a scorpion, take a picture. Try to take a picture. Um, because living in Arizona is for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, really wants to move out there. I'm gonna try to apply to grad school out there. Nice. What what grad school? Uh CRNA programs. Certified registered nurse anesthetist. Mm, okay. okay. Are most of the schools you're applying to in Phoenix or? Um, there's a program, I think it's at, I think it's at University of Arizona, maybe. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, USA has a lot of, uh, they have a lot of, I think their medical program is pretty robust. Yeah, and I, I mean, I used to have a friend that lived out there and I really loved visiting out there um it doesn't really so much cooperate with zach as much with him being redheaded but um i liked it <laughs> well at least now there's cell phones so if you do get bit by something you can take a picture for yeah you know back in the day back in the day no i do like living in arizona you have draw you have to sketch it <laughs> get sketch artist out <laughs> yeah i do like living here I, I don't like all the birds and or all the bugs and all the stuff as much but Okay. I mean, I think because of it. And I also feel like that's pretty much because we're not in Phoenix. Like, if we were in Metro Phoenix, there wouldn't be as much of yeah. snakes in. Like, but if we were in Metro Phoenix, it'd be 99 degrees at four in the morning still. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. No. True story. Yeah. Phoenix is, Phoenix is hot. Are you all at a higher elevation? Because I know New Mexico has like Taos that's pretty high up. Yeah. And yeah, yeah so, we're at like 3,500 feet. Yeah, about 3,500 feet in, in where we are. And then, you know, Flagstaff is 7,000 feet. Yeah. So it's, it's quite temperate. It snows, it snows in Flagstaff. Lots of snow. Yeah, it's certain years. Oh. 
Hmm. And it, it snows here too, actually. We, we get little snow and hail storms. And yeah, yeah, I mean, when it's like 115 in Phoenix, it will be like 105 here. You know, so it's it's significantly cooler. Still hot, but but not. it all, it also cools down at night because like in Phoenix, it's just concrete everywhere and like asphalt. And so all day long, that's all absorbing the sun. And so even though the sun's not out anymore, it takes hours for that to radiate back out. So no, it's it stays, heat yeah, so it stays really hot all night long. Whereas up here, it's like we're it's rural. Hot, but it's, since the air is dry, there's nothing holding moisture. Yeah, so it, even, even in the middle of the summer, it's tolerable outside at night, you know. But, and that makes a big difference, I feel like, when at least at night you can kind of go outside and enjoy the weather. Yeah, open up the windows, kind of air up. And yeah, out. and I feel like Tucson is better than Phoenix in terms of. And Tucson's higher elevation. Yeah, too. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, good luck in your application process. And uh, Thank yeah, you. yeah, I'll, I'll share more scary bug and reptile stories later. We had a friend who called, we had a, we had a good girlfriend who called at like 1030 at night the other night. We're both like laying in bed, getting ready for bed. And she calls at 1030 at night and she's like, I didn't know how else to call it. I know the rock rocks are really like outdoorsy and really like there's a scorpion in my house and I don't know what to do. Like she was just like and Evan like tries to like talk her through. He's like, Well, you just want to put glass over it and put it, you know, like and get it out. And she's like, I can't leave it. I can't leave to go get a glass because if I leave and I come back and it's not there anymore, like what do I do? There's a scorpion, you know. And so finally at like 1045, he's like, Do you want me to come over and get the scorpion for you? You know, she was <laughs> 20 minutes away, <laughs> 15. And she's like, yeah, that's why I'm calling you. Like, I'm, not, I'm not calling you to teach me how to deal with a scorpion. Like, please come get the scorpion. <laughs> I, my friend that lived out there, um, she, I guess, I know she told me like a separate story that she was like sitting at her desk in her house and then like a scorpion just like fell from the ceiling. And then... But then when I went out to see no. her, she was just like, oh, that's Bob. And I'm like, who's Bob? And she was like, he's my pet scorpion. And she like got a scorpion and just had it like in a critter keeper. And she had like that, a squirrel that they found like half dead on the road. A pet squirrel? <laughs> and then like a cat named Stevie and a dog <laughs> named Spot. That's and they were like people in her house in Arizona. <laughs> little ragtag pet crew right there i like it <laughs> i don't want it in my house but i like it <laughs> yeah i knew people that had scorpions as pets growing up they weren't like the scary little ones that are smaller they are and the lighter and more translucent they are the more dangerous they are i had a Ooh. friend that had one that was like this big and it was all black and it looked real scary but it would feel roughly like an ant bite if it stung you Whereas the little ones, one, they're babies, so they don't know how to regulate how much they're injecting. Same good, same thing goes for like baby rattlesnakes. They just inject everything every time. And then they have to replenish however long it takes them to do that. And they over time learn not to do that. But when they're tiny like that, so we have we have this this giant honking it was like hairy black speaking scorpion hairy. scorpions get hairy yeah there's like little like not hairy like, like shaggy like tarantula but, yeah like tarantula hair all over it not um, for me no thank you it was medieval it was no. like prehistoric freaking crazy yeah <laughs> no it really seems like a design flaw there because like the smallest ones are the hardest ones to find you need that UV light. Oh yeah, because they shine, right? Yeah, they they reflect or like, yeah, they're visible under UV. Huh. Yeah, that's what our friend. Our friend was like, well, now that one scorpion's in my house, I guess I have to go get a UV light and like check for like a family and check for a nest and check for. And I was just like, or you can just move. Like, <laughs> just leave the space. Set the whole house on fire. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Start over. Burn it. Bury it in the backyard. <laughs> uh, all right, friends. We got to go make some dinner and eat what something we, other than just beer. What are we going to have for dinner? Smoke a Oh, okay. Yeah, when you live in Arizona, you eat a lot of Mexican food. <laughs> but it's like the best Mexican food you've ever had, besides Mexico. 
<laughs> yeah. Thank it's you for joining us always. on Octoberfest. It's been a pleasure for those of you who are still here and not fully online. Thank you for joining as well. Have a great rest of your night and we'll see you next week or next month for American Single Malls. It's such a great kit and the distillers are going to be really, here. It's really awesome. We're so excited about it. All right. Thank sounds you. good. Have a good night. Thanks. See y'all. Here y'all. Bye. Thank you.